back to this. I'm going to actually peel this tape now to get a good look at what we've we've done. Nice little reveals here. So let's use my scalpel. Peel all this back. Not too bad. I didn't get too much overspray. And there we go. So we left left a little bit of that detail there. I didn't get any paint on it, which is good. Uh, peel the stuff off the top as well. We got a little bit of bleed through. That's okay. We're going to be texturing the, the roof tiles anyway, but just for a majority of the paint, a couple little spots, easy to, to cover back up. So, um, yeah, so I'm just going to go another layer on this. I'll actually just keep painting away. I don't mind that this gray paint that uh, I primed it with is peeking through. It gives it that dingy look. We are going to really age this down with a lot of uh, washes. Washes uh, basically are watered down um, color to go over top of it. It allows the color that's underneath to peek through. And it just gives you that dingy, unwashed look. So I'm just going to paint all the trim and things. Um, so yeah, this is a second coat going around. It's holding, holding the paint really well now for us. The balsa wood was really absorbent. But I just want to make sure I get all the, all the angles, look around, you know, see where um, I might have missed it with paint, and there will be heaps of places where I missed. And it's a big house, so I'm going to forget. I'm going to miss stuff. Side's already had a second coat. I will spin it. There's no window pane in the, in the upstairs window here, so I can really get get that uh, window sill painted. It's really humid in the workshop today, so it's taking things a little bit longer to set. So we're just going to do a side at a time and really get this coated the best we can. Fill in anything we missed. Where's that other brush? This one.
I'm layering. I'm really laying it on now. When painting miniatures, it's all about the, the texture and the detail of it. Trying to find the realism in it. I feel like I'm going for a more realistic look than it's sort of a, a kid's Halloween thing. It's getting kind of the, like it's a movie miniature or something. I don't know what I'm trying to do here, but um, I like it. I like that it's looking like a, uh, a real house in a way from a bright, beautiful beach house that it's been abandoned by some celebrity. This house would probably still go for millions regardless. That's really laying on nice. Staying with the grain of the wood. That'll help us later. That little bit of texture helps for um, our washes and our detail. I'll paint these hinges. Like to disguise that too, that might be, you know, a different build where you put a chimney over top of that and kind of work the bricks around it. Uh, I'm not going to do that for this job, but um, just trying to think what you would do to sort of disguise hinges and things. And I'm not thinning this paint out either. I'm laying it on as thick as I can, just so it has the texture to it. It's small texture, but it's there. It'll, the light will grab it. Woo, it's a lot to do there. It's a big side. Basically, we're at hour two on this, which isn't too bad. We've done an hour and a half. Now we're getting into the, the second hour. I've been looking up different images for abandoned homes and haunted houses and things like that and kind of get an idea of what, you know, the, the exterior looks like. Um, more than not, they just look like on, you know, sort of not cleaned up and not, hasn't been painted in a long, long time. Um, if it's been a white house, which was, I've been looking up old white houses um, getting ideas for that, you know, shutters are all busted loose or um, just really, everything's just dingy more than anything. Just needs a fresh paint. Glad I bought this big, what is this, couple liters? Two liters of paint here. It would have costed me a fortune in small tubes. That was only $30 for that, and that's not too bad. That'll go a long way. Cheap paint for something like this is good. 
So no need to go get expensive stuff. Again, painting with the direction of the wood. Laying it on. I used to be a house painter when I was a teenager, and they would, you would see the paint from previous painting crews, and you could see where they went really heavy and maybe didn't brush it out, so that, you know, you can leave that too. That little, little bit of detail is handy. All right, I'm gonna get into this. Into this again. I can't wait to bring the airbrush out in this. This is gonna be, that'll be a lot of fun. The washes and the airbrush will really make this thing look incredible. I think next episode, I'm gonna just take time out on this and actually do little, a little mold demo. So molds will be, we'll do a little mold of, I don't know, some, maybe a, a skull head or or something that's a detail to the house. You know, something up in here. I think something needs to be there. So I'll show, um, I'll show the, the audience how to make little molds with si silicon molds and a little bit of resin casting. Real easy stuff to do, fun. Really handy for all sorts of hobbies and tricks. Like I said, I'm going heavy here, so. But I'm still painting in the direction of the grain. I'll have to get down here and look up up underneath it for low angle shots too. We'll want to do, you know, take the camera at some point and make it look realistic and get down at the perspective of where a person would be walking in. So that could be fun for, you know, little camera tricks that we can play with later. So I want to make sure all this is painted underneath. And I'll lay the house down soon and Take a look, see where we're at with it. a booger. That's bound to happen. I got to clean my palette soon. I think once I paint this wall, we'll take stock and clean up a little bit. I'm laying it on nice and heavy. It's taking a little bit to dry, so I'm just kind of hammering it on. All right. I think we can pause there. We, mo we mostly have this all sort of washed out now. So we have uh, a base white paint on it. Uh, it's not important for me to get it to perfection white. Um, having some of that, uh, the primer 
peeking through is good because it's giving it a bit of an age already. But I think now what I'm, I'm ready to do is get into some washes. And I can get a good look at how much aging that I'm um, looking to do. So what I, at this point what I have, I have some um, uh, golden brand uh, acrylics, which are really, really lovely colors. Um, there's a burnt umber light, and then there's a sepia. I have a raw umber. And I have a shading gray. And I'm just gonna kind of use those as different sort of washes, keeping it really sort of filthy um, is what I'm going for. So I'm gonna go through basically everywhere, anything that's got like a, a crack or anything like that. And I'm gonna use some water. I'm gonna use a bit of foam as a sponge or a sponge you can use. And basically I'm just gonna take the brush, dip it in my paint, keep it really watery, and then just kind of drape it across the, uh, the paintwork. And then I'm gonna sort of stipple it out so it kind of breaks up the uh, sourciness to it. And so I'll just drag it across these eaves. I'll let it wash down, that's the idea of why it's called washes, because you're just basically washing it on really thin. And then naturally the paint, the thicker bits are gonna hang in the corners and hang in the areas that, you know, they'll, they'll settle. And if I don't like a bit of it, I'll just take a damp sponge and just blot it. Just blot it back and let it settle. It'll dry naturally. And it's gonna give it a real old look to it. Like it's been, you know, uncared for. That's the idea. Up into these, the eaves where leaves and all sorts of stuff would sort of settle. Here comes the real rain. So it's a good test area to sort of start at the top there. And then I'll just kind of go and let it drizzle down the sides. See that, I just did that wash through and then that's gonna Give some dimension and texture. Knock some of it back, let some drips happen. You can kind of pick and choose the drips that we like and don't like. Let things happen naturally. All right, I need to kind of spin this so I can get a look at it too. Sides of the camera. See where I want to take it. That's looking cool. I like that. I really like this, this corner here. That's feeling realistic to me. I'll get into the, the window itself a bit. Dirty window sills. Old creepy farmhouse. Beach house, sorry, this is the creepy beach house. Hannah Montana walked away from it. See, up in those, those eaves, you can really lay the, the heavy stuff in there. Just let it fall down. I'm 
I'll hit those sills. It's got a bit of yellowing from the plastic. That's okay. Texture, texture, texture. Wash, wash, wash. You can see that right there, all that paint is settling on that edge. I like it. Gives it a nice sharp darkness edge there, but I'll just absorb some of it so it's not too crazy. And that looks cool. That looks like it's got a lot of age and grime. Fun bit. This is the fun stuff. still settling, so I can kind of keep moving it. I might actually just get a little pa dry paper towel. And just blot it. So even blotting that gives it a nice, interesting texture. Whatever sort of draws your eye into it. That's cool. Like I said, we can go back over it. This is interesting here. Some of these up close, you can see some really interesting things starting to happen. And when it dries, it'll stay put for you. Do, do some brown washes first. Sort of scrub it in. Some filthy water. Dry paper towel, blot some of it. Some interesting textures again. Get back into all that round. Yeah, these golden colors are beautiful. Really rich pigment. Turn this towards the camera a bit more. Get up into those eaves. Blot some of it. Some more sponge textures too. So continuing on with washing here, uh, I'm just gonna go with this burnt umber that I've had and a little bit of black. And I'm gonna have a couple different mixes going on and I'll just take and continue to sort of wash really wet, dirty water even, that's fine. And let all the pigments sort of fall into the cracks and crevices. And then I can just blot it out. I can leave some to sort of stop and stain. That's fine. Working around all the windows. I feel like that would have a real heavy amount of uh, grunginess to it. I'll just keep washing the color into it. Old bit of timber. I 
I'll let the dark settle into this, this bit of timber. And then I can do a, a, a white dry brush on that too to give it a little bit of a highlight for uh, maybe newer timber on it. It's all right to be a bit sloppy right there and then just blot some of it back. Grab a little bit of black, just a little bit of dirtiness to it. Up underneath this porch, if you remember the previous videos, I, I put balsa wood all around these areas. And I'll just let that gray, gray wash go into there. Timber usually goes gray the older it gets. More water. Let's go around all these big windows. Just keep washing it on. I'll probably take a bigger brush now too. Let's scrub it in. bit of dark, dark right up underneath the eaves, heavy. looking pretty good there. Let, I'll let that settle. I'll come over to the, the front where I've been working a little bit off camera. I'll show you what I've been doing here. I've been taking some more of that burnt umber, a little bit of black. Have some really nice areas sort of building up. I'm just kind of having a play with it off camera. And I just keep building it up, let it drizzle and drip. You know, then I just knock it back a little bit, give a bit of texture with with um, a paper towel. I have some sepia kind of peeking through. It gives it that yellowing effect. I'll put some more up here so you can get a good look at it. It's got a greenish yellow hue. And it's really starting to age now. I think once I get into the airbrush, I can really focus into these corners. But a brush works just as well, too. I mean, I, I'm gonna try different little techniques just to show and see what I like as well. I might, you know, using the airbrush to sort of fog some areas in. But, you know, water staining it looks natural. And more that the black settles into the cracks, the more definition the house gets underneath all these little slats. Underneath here would be really dirty. Really grimy looking. It's an extra special haunted house, you know what I mean? So it's, it's supposed to be a little bit creepier and grotier than, than anything else that we've seen. But that's looking really nice. Got a good amount of layering going on. Uh, and the next video I'm gonna do, I'll show you guys really quick. We'll stay there with the camera because we're kind of looking this way. 
Um, I'm going to do some molds. So I'm going to show you guys next week. We'll take a little break from the painting and do little molds and show you how to actually um, put little de decals and stuff like that on there. So I found this, these tiny little skulls from uh, a dollar shop nearby. <clears throat> and what I'll do, because they're, I can't really sand these down, but I'll show how to, how to make a mold out of uh, silicon. And then we'll pour it up in a urethane resin, like a real fast setting urethane. And then we'll add them, add the skulls to the top of here. And just give that, you know, that, that death look to it. I think that'll look amazing. So you can get, a, get an idea what I might do. I'll put these skulls up there and they'll be embedded a little bit tighter. So that'd be a fun detail to put on. Um, I know you're supposed, you should probably put your details on first, but I don't know, we're just kind of having a bit of fun with it. And um, I have some dragons as well. Where my dragons go? So we'll mold these dragons too. And then we'll pour these guys up and then there might be a, a neat detail way up top. You know, like some gargoyle sort of detailing that somebody had. And then we'll mold those and then cast those out of a urethane. So that'll be the next, next video. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep working away here. Getting the darkness into all that. It's a white house, remember, so we don't wanna go, you know, black, black on it. We just want it to be really grungy. Very grungy. And I don't know if the camera can pick this up under here, but I'm doing a big heavy wash. So we'll do that and let it just sort of run down. Cue the rain. I'm just gonna let that run. Might even do another heavy hit up there. Just really heavy. And you can see all the water sort of beating there. The pigment will stay put once the water kind of dissipates. And then just give it a white bag. Leave a bit of texture on to that as well. Disgusting old white house. I'm gonna leave those streaks going. I like, I like that. We'll add another layer to that later. But for now, we're just gonna let it settle. More at the top, up here. It's kind of into the inside of the house, but we'll just, we'll just start looking into it. It's just paint, we can always go back over it. mop this down a bit just so it's not dripping down below. To anywhere that the brush can kind of hammer into it. So that's looking pretty good there. I'll give another spin. Let's go to the to this part of the house. I've did a little bit already here which I really like, I really like that. I'll just keep working around the windows. But we're trying to give this house as much character as we possibly can. So every angle. Wiping it back again. Building the layers. See how it's cool. Amazing. Let it settle in all the deep cracks. Put a little bit of black into it.
We're building up a lot of color now. It's really giving some definition. Um, I like to go a bit darker in there. I think that's why, you know, like the airbrush comes into effect in there. It really gives you a heavier line or um, gives you that contrast that you need. It's gonna scumble all over that. Bit of black and brown. I don't care if it's hitting the windows. I really just want this paint to soak into areas that you kind of can't see. It'll add the dimension to it, definition. And just soak up, blot into the windows if you think it's too heavy. Just get rid of the heavy stuff, let it soak. A little bit of black, a little bit of brown. Get that gray, gray wood effect. Letting it soak in. All right. Looking cool. Maybe a little bit of that sepia on that door. That's nice. That wet door, put a bit of that sepia. Right into the grain, let it just soak into the grain. Some Texas chainsaw looking door. Oh, I don't want it to fall out though. Looks like it's gonna fall out a little bit. More dimension, just keep giving it more dimension. All those different washes are settling in. You can see just the, uh, the grain of the wood peeking through on the, the balsa, that's what we want. It's all sort of hanging underneath the eaves and all those all the slats. I can see areas where I can probably hit another pass with it. Obviously keep spinning the thing and you'll see more. More to do, more to do, more to do. Just more washes. Put it right on that windowsill. A little scrubbing, scumbling. So that would be scumbling with your brush. Sort of a texture technique with paint brushing. Just adds to it. Little drips and things from, you know, different, different tones. Oh, big white wall there. Compared to all of this now. How are we doing for time, Tyler? Yeah, we're doing about 16 minutes. Okay. So we got basically two episodes in that.
Do you want to pop in for tighter stuff or? I'm actually taking it off. Oh yeah, okay. on it, knock it back, let it settle, that's cool. And then the big white wall there, then we'll have all the sides with a color on it. in a short amount of time here. It doesn't take long to sort of get the look going. You get these, you know, you can be bold with it. It doesn't matter. Lay it on heavy. It's meant to be spooky and disgusting. Washes. It's all on the layers. Knocking it back again. See, when I wiped that away there, it cleaned it right up. So you know that you can really go heavy on it and you can always bring it back. Comes the rain again. nearly there for at least one pass into that window. Heavy, 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 heavy. This has got more black in it. That's okay. We'll put some more brown in. There you go. Just a bit of burn umber. Just stab that right there. Let it run down the walls. Goes with the grain too. These pieces would be, the grain would run that way. Grain runs this way. Streak a bit of black in it. Let it run, let it settle. I'll spin this guy around one more time, get our bits out next week. Back around to this, starting to settle a bit, which is looking good. All right, we'll come back to this and um, we'll add some cool little details to this bits again. So we'll add some skulls to that. We'll probably sand that back so we can actually uh, attach the, the skulls and other little things. Um, but yeah, I think that's a good starting of the wash. Yeah, just washes with acrylic paint. Just keep building up the colors, wiping it back, nice settling in there now. That's looking really cool. This is what I'm, I'm going for. This sort of corner is kind of the, um, will be sort of the tell of what I want to do. So, and then some of this. All right, see you next time.